Yay, we're finally halfway through the second semester. Are you guys excited to wrap up the last quarter? I know I am. All right, so today's episode will mainly surround the topic of college and senior events. I'm excited. On Friday, April 1st, our outstanding senior dancers had a performance to showcase their talent. Um, I heard it did pretty well, so let's see how the Bulldogs perform together. On Friday, April 1st, Sense Dance Program had a showcase for our seniors. The seniors took this opportunity to display their talents that we have been missing due to the pandemic. Here's some highlights from the performance. Phenomenal job, seniors. You guys are what makes sense sensational. We wish you the best of luck moving on forward. From March 19th to April 1st, SENSE students got to experience and participate in various activities surrounding after high school and college opportunities. My personal favorite was the film course, so that was really interesting to learn about how films were made and how the cast process works. What about you, Wesley? Well, I also enjoyed the film one, but I found the business one interesting as well. Marsha College is an annual event for first years, sophomores, and juniors, and also you know me, senior. This gives students an opportunity to explore college majors, job opportunities, and more. On April 1st, it was Marsha College for seniors. Because of the pandemic, the event was held within Sen High School instead of where we usually go, Loyola University. Jesse Sharkey, the president of CTU, was the keynote speaker. Before, before Jesse Sharkey was the CTU president, he worked at Nicholas Sen High School as a history teacher for many years. Uh, well, teachers obviously um, advocate for students by, by asking for high quality uh, programs at school. Um, we want our schools to be well resourced. We want kids to have access to art and music. Um, we want extracurricular programs. We want our facilities to be nice. Basically, we're looking for well resourced schools that our students deserve. Here, um, I spent a better part of a decade I taught everything from freshman world studies all the way to history and American to the higher level and the Ivy Diploma program. So, and then everything in between. So, I love this place. It's made a huge amount of money up. And I'm really happy to see Seven High School class um, of 2022 in the house. You gotta listen. You gotta, you gotta relate to the people who are in front of you. Like, don't just have that movie going in your head. It's like, you're not trying to teach material, you're trying to teach people, right? Um, and the other, um, uh, the other lesson I would say is, um, teachers have to be learning at the same time their students are learning. Like, if you, if you do something, it doesn't work, you have to reflect on it and think about how you're gonna do it again next time. Um, and, and that's a lesson in life, isn't it? If you think about it, like, you, you try it, if you don't like the result, you gotta, tr you gotta think about what went, what was, how it's gonna go better and try it again. A lot of teachers have many fun activities such as brain breaks, meditation, introduction to business, film, and TV productions. One of the presenters was Mr. Reinhardt, and he talked about entrepreneurship and how he had his own business in making home goods. It's been a lot of fun. Um, especially for Mr. Barcelo and myself, to sort of show a different side of us to the students. Um, you know, it's, it's exciting to allow students to see different avenues. Um, I know they're getting a lot out of, you know, seeing how the process works. Like, I gotta do some self-reflection, I gotta come up with a big idea, I gotta identify my market. Um, so it's, it's, it's really cool and I think students are really having a good time with it.
it was really good it was a, a great opportunity you know when i first came in i didn't really like expect much but after hearing the experiences of how you know they grew as a person and how it changed their lives i think this is a perfect opportunity for me and i'm not gonna let this opportunity go and you guys shouldn't too you know ignite my journey so do you guys have like business cards yeah we'll do. Right now. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll thank you, you thank you, you. Guys walk out we'll yeah sure. all right babe. Of course, you know, I don't know the basics of business 101 yet, but, you know, business and real estate really, really go hand in hand. Business is like, you know, you need that communication, you need that drive and that power. And in real estate, you really do need that communication, you know, that you have to basically set up your own portfolio. You have to basically tell people that you're reliable. And basically, if you're going to business and if you're going to a business and real estate, you know, it really shows that you're, you're committed and you're really ready to change lives. And I'm going to get, get that next step for me. In the end, overall, everyone had a good time for March to College. Due to the March Madness Tournament, our great Sun teachers decorated their doors in the colors and signs of the colleges they went to. Or the ones that they were assigned to. Ha 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 ha. Uh, the door was decorated to Michigan State University, which was a personal highlight of all decorated doors. The doors who were awarded the best were Room 203 Cold State and MSU, Room 336 Villanova, and the oval winner was Room 233 University of Michigan. The most creative doors were ranked as follows. Third place went to room 358, South Dakota State. Second place went to room 3, 363, University of Wisconsin. And last but not least, first place went to the South Dakota State. In the ranking of the most informative doors, the third best door was room 346, Davidson College, second best was room 322, Loyola, and the most informative store was New Mexico State. So, it's been a minute, but let's see what the Bulldogs think of the slapper round from the world, from the Oscars. Both were wrong, let me tell you why I think Chris was wrong. Um, I felt like he was kind of in the wrong just a little bit because I feel like he should have did his research on what that G.I. Jane stuff was about and the history behind um, Jada's like health stuff like that. Honestly, Will is just a totally different story. He just needs to leave that, that girl alone because she's toxic to his life. I felt like that slap had a lot of history behind it and it wasn't just the the joke that was being told because in a video he's laughing so obviously he thought the joke was funny but it's the fact that she had a problem with it that he had a problem with it and that shouldn't be like that if y'all married and y'all been together all these years she's just too toxic in his life and his environment and she gives negative energy she just needs to go he needs to divorce her already because she's making me mad so basically you think jay's the problem yeah she's the problem for sure all right lisa what you think um i honestly think that Chris Rock was in the wrong, him and whoever his team is, because, you know, they got to write down them jokes before they say them, too. So I just feel like you should have, somebody should have looked over that. And as far as Will Smith, I mean, I would have slapped him, too, because, you know, that's my girl. You know, that's my wife. So I would have had to slap him, too. So so y'all want somebody to come behind y'all like that? Y'all want somebody to slap him? Out of him. Ain't nobody disrespecting someone's wife. Like, what the fuck? I think Will Smith is just, uh, like, a little bad tempered because Jada was doing some stuff and he's like, he got a chip on his shoulder thinking he got to do too much now to show that he a man or something. He got to prove something. And so he just ended up looking goofy, slapping the man for, for, I mean, is leukemia, which is like a disease or something. But it's like, just go to him after the show or just or just yell like he did. Don't go up and slap him during the Oscars. And he should have been carried out for that. They should have got the police on his ass immediately. Like, just because he rich, he got away with that. So it was BS. I mean, he was in the wrong because he embarrassed. He basically embarrassed a grown man in front of a billion people. So if that, if that was you and um, Will spot and your girlfriend was getting embarrassed you wouldn't say nothing you would just let it be I me mean, i would but like 
I don't know what to do and keep my calm, but I will say something, but I, I will not just go embarrass him in front of other people like that. Facts. I say no, because Chris Rock is like a comedian, so that's like his job. And like, if he got offended, like he could have said something and not like smack him. It's like his, it's, it's Chris's job. Like, and most of the time, they don't even, like, they're not responsible of what they're saying at the awards because it's all scripted and everything. I think we're right for doing that because, like, if someone were to talk about like my boyfriend and girlfriend, I'd smack the shit. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I just think he's in the right. What about you? Uh, to be honest. I don't really keep up with them, but uh, I heard that the girl was cheating on him and that um, he slapped the dude, like uh, Chris Rock. Yeah, just because, she, I don't know. She wasn't even mad for real. She, he just got up just like uh, to show off or whatever. So I don't, I don't really know, like, uh, I guess. But to be honest, this relationship doesn't seem, doesn't sit right with me. No. Yeah, the relationship, right? So even with you knowing that, um, that Jada was cheating on Will and, and yeah, girl. Chris in the right, bro. Because, <clears throat> bro, have someone cheat on me, bro. I swear to God, I'm gonna become petty. I'm gonna just let this stuff happen to them. Like, I don't care. Yeah. And Chris Rock is a comedian, so it's his job to crack jokes on people, you know? What the, Will was laughing too. I think if I was Chris Rock and I was to be slapped in front of Zendaya, um, I'd be very sad and humiliated, so I don't really agree with what Will Smith did. I think he should have exhibited more self-control, and yeah, he has no reason to defend somebody that cheated on him so easily anyways, so yeah, that's what I think. Like, it was funny to me, but um, he could have waited after the thing, because I heard they was homies or something, like Chris Rock and his homies, so he should have been. I think he was right or wrong. Uh, I think he was wrong because he could easily control his emotions or at least just do it somewhere private. Okay. All right, Bulldogs, that's it for today. Stay tuned for next episode. It's going to be inconceivable. Toots, Toots and the Goose! <laughs> yeah! <laughs>